What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode number 69, pause, of the King's Speech Podcast with (laughs) with Trevor and Josh, the podcast you can learn from, relate to, and laugh at from two guys who realize the streets and the club only look fun on television, Instagram, and apparently in the back of U-Haul trucks during All-Star Weekend. I missed that one. I missed yeah. that. I missed that. What was, what was going on All Star in the U-Haul? So there are nice. there were a bunch of like hotel rooms that were already booked. So hotels didn't have any space for people. So instead, people drove U-Hauls down to Atlanta and slept in the back of U-Haul trucks because it was that it was that serious for them to be in the city while you know LeBron James and Kawhi Leonard were there. I. Mm-hmm. How was your weekend, man? <laughs> a lot better than people who slept in the back of a U-Haul. Jeez, that's yeah. crazy. It's nuts, right? That's nuts, man. People, God bless, man. I would never. It's never that serious. There's no event I'd ever need to be at so badly that I need to sleep in the back of a U-Haul truck. But, you know, it's each his own. Hopefully they had a good time. That's not the story you want to live to tell. The stories you want to live to tell. I remember back in 06 when I drove down with my boys and we... Yeah. Yeah, that story is popping. The tw- the 2021, I went to All-Star Weekend, the one-day event. <laughs> and slept in a U-Haul. The one-day event. <laughs> in hopes that I would have run into was. James Harden. <laughs> and you slept in the back of the U-Haul. That's not the one you want to tell. That's not the story you want to live to tell. No, it's not. There was also like a, a, a GoFundMe page going I around. I saw that. For a woman that needed to get home from Atlanta that apparently did not have the fun, did not have funds for a round trip ticket. I don't I don't understand, man. I don't understand, man. I just, you know, hearts uh prayers out to those <laughs> hearts and prayers. Hearts and prayers to those who um are in need and in Atlanta. Are they in, in need? Uncomfortable situations. I think they're in need of better judgment. I mean, <laughs> I think, I think they're, they're in need, of, need of. Of, of mental healing support support some type of support something man indeed so we're back for episode number 69 guys obviously obviously i would be here in person for the 69 because 69 is such a random only you heard (laughs) i am i am not advocating for freaks only (laughs) that is opening a can of worms that i am not prepared to be accountable for that's not the pod I just Absolutely not. Get that out of there. Get the awkwardness out of there. If you guys thought this was going to be a freaky pod, it's not. <laughs> Do we're they? T- we're going to talk about Meghan Markle, All Star Weekend, Bobby Schmurda, and uh, New Drake. Does Does anybody really it's- tune in for us to be the freaky pod? I don't no, think. I don't but, think they tune up us to be the freaky pod. But, but on the 6th and episode, they might think that we <laughs> we might have dipped into our creative bag and we're like, yo, let's get freaky for them. But we're not. We're not gonna do that. I I, I don't know. This, this, yeah, it's I don't I don't I don't know if I'm allowed to get freaky for them. I don't think so. I don't I don't no. I don't think that's in the uh, in the we rule gave book up there. Those rights. Gave it up, indeed. Hate those. <laughs> and uh, that too, and this and that, and this and that. Just absolutely. Take it, take it off. So we got. <laughs> We got a few things to get to. Um, I'm gonna let Josh get his topics off first because he's the producer of this episode. Ha! Yeah, I'm the producer of this episode, man. Big producer, big producer vibes. I, I just want to say shout out to OVO for producing this episode. We want to thank our sponsors, OVO and the good people in the Yo, Drake ain't sent us shit. <laughs> I, I got my <laughs> so you got your shit? Wow. I, I guess because I'm kinda, talking I shit, right? Send you, yeah, yeah. If you I would have sent you some stuff, but you have said nothing with Terrible things about the last I have not. Certified lover give, boy. Give me the option to say something. Give me the option to 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 give my opinion on this topic right, and we'll man. see if well, I got something nice to say. It was a I don't know where you were um at 10 30 <laughs> on Thursday. <laughs> Yo, lock in for this conversation. Uh-huh. Okay. On 10 30 last week. Okay. But the boy dropped on his 10 30 a.m. Instagram, no PM. PM. Okay. Scary hours. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> What's wrong with me? 10 30 a.m. That's not a scary hour. Man. So at 10 30 okay. p.m., the boy um he, he, he dropped a little something on his Instagram. You know, he did a little rollout. Okay. He said, yo, Sirius XM radio. Mm-hmm. OVO sound. Jump in. And I don't know about you, man, but like all seriousness, like all, all seriousness, or all jokes aside, serious. Oh, being serious. Attack. Yeah, being serious. Okay. Do you remember back in the day? Well, you're not a Drake fan, so I can't even have this. This is a moment. Nah, try me. Try me. Ask me. Do you remember when Drake used to drop on OVO Radio? No. (laughs) (laughs) All right. 
Continue. You can go. <laughs> what was OVO Radio? I have no idea what OVO Radio is. I'm not here to pot. <laughs> I'm not potting today. Okay. No, I got you. I got you. I'm here with you. Okay, I'm so. Here with you. I'm uh, here with you. Whatever, man. The boy dropped <laughs> OVO Radio. So it's like when. Um, so is this guy such a buzzkill? Go I'm ahead. Drake pack. Go ahead. Let's get to the Drake pack. I'll tell you how I feel. I'll tell you how I feel. You killed the Drake pack. Just... No, 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 I didn't. I don't uh, think so. Look, 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 look. So back in the day, Drake used to drop on OVO Sound Radio new hits, um, new features, and it would be like a string of like different, like just current popping songs. And mm-hmm. it would cover, like I thought about you when I was listening because there was a set that I did not appreciate at all. It was the, you know what set it was? What are you talking about? Dun 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 dun. Dun 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 dun. That, 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 that Skepta. <laughs> that, <laughs> big man tell me yeah, come yeah, at me yeah 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 yeah. that shit so they, like you know what I mean so they cover a range obviously of music that Drake and that crew kind of gets influenced or, uh-huh. or they love and then at 12 so it was like a cool playlist a lot of different tracks that like are, are popping right now and then at 12 he dropped the scary ass ooh spooky <laughs> spooky so what did you think? What did you think about the tree, about the three pack? I was about to make the um, tree pack, the three pack. Here's my thing. I wanted I wanted to just make sure out of this three pack that it was Drake as usual. What's Drake as usual? Catchy. Okay. Witty. Um pr- produced well, great visuals. Um mm-hmm. you know, club hits. Uh um, Okay. I love a feature, classic feature in the Rick Ross feature. Mm-hmm. Little baby, hottest rapper out. It's just, it's just traditional Drake, and he sticks to the routine. And it's those are throwaways. You those think those even... tracks were throwaways? Yeah, I think they're okay. Throwaways. I think that I don't, I don't think they'll be on Certified Lover Boy. I don't think so either, but yeah. I don't think they were. I don't. So that's a throwaway to me. If you're not on an album, no, not really, because. Artists are putting out EPs, in, four in, packs, in a, in a, in a cocky packs. way. In a, in a, in a, I say that in the most hum, uh, 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 very forward and cocky throw. Like, like I'm going to give you all three heat gunners. So you think we're getting stuff better and than that a, on Certified Lover Boy? Not that. I'm just saying, I'm going to give you like great caliber work. Uh-huh. Rick, 11 Pepper, Rick Ross, Drake... Drake and Rick Ross reunion. That's big. Yo, get mm-hmm. out of here, man. What? I, I didn't like even this. tell you. You didn't even ask so, me how, how what I, I felt about the songs. I listened to all three of them. Okay, what did you, you feel? I liked it. That's cool, man. I liked it. Yeah. I think um, Lil Baby got his shit off um, on that track. Um, but the thing is, is like, and of course, like, Rick Ross and Drake never fail, right? Like, every single track they put out is fire. You know, you got Pop That. You got, like, Aston Martin Music. Everything is fine with Rick Ross and Drake. Um, but I mean, you know, this is, this, I, you know, it's Drake. Like, it's not anything groundbreaking. It's yeah, yeah. same thing. Yeah. It hasn't taken us to yeah. another level yet. Yeah. It's just all the same shit. Yep. So, I mean. That's cool. Though. That's good with me. But why? That's cool with me, man. Because we're going to just end up repeating the same shit that we said before. Why are you okay with everything just being the same with Drake? The, the, the same the same type of beats. It works. It works. I don't know, man. I I, I think at some point that wants to go to new levels. I do. I would like artists to go to new levels. I would like artists yeah. to experiment. Jay Z took you to a new level when he was a oh my god when he was a dad, right? When he was a, when he had three kids and a wife and a wife. Drake is still touching these women's out here, man. Still running game. He's a he's a boy. He's a certified. He's called himself a certified lover. Boy. He's in his thirties. He's a grown ass man. <laughs> so I, thirty-two with Millie's, bro. I'm I'm still a boy. I don't know. I don't I don't I don't know if grow up for who? Grow up for why I live in a mansion. I watched that video today. <laughs> the embassy. Eh. Ugh, next topic, man. The thing is, when I started, when I. When I played those three songs, I knew exactly how they were going to sound. And they sounded great. Like, Drake got his shit off. And I told you before, I love rapping Drake. I think Drake has bars. I think he's clever. I think he's super lyrical when he wants to be. I just don't like harmonizing Drake. I don't like swooning Drake. I don't like, you know, pining over video model and only fan girl Drake. Like, I, that's, that's, that's just not the Drake for me. 
That's okay. I don't like going through a girl's purse. Drake. That's not the type of Drake I like. I don't like going through a girl's phone Drake. Okay. I'm just saying. Thank you. No problem. No further questions, you are. <laughs> what you got? What you got next on the agenda? Um, well, I just want to let the good people know because we've been keeping them very, very brisk with the news and everything. Uh, I got some official dates on that good old 1400 Stimmy. Stimmy. Yeah. Stimmy time. 1400. I'm going to see all y'all in Florida. I'm going to see all y'all in Florida. If not on March 22nd, I'll probably see you guys on March 29th because that's what people do. They get the little baggy bag, and then they come down to Florida, buy a couple bottles, and they have a good time. I mean, I seen it, I seen it done so many different times. I mean, one night in Miami is four. Is if you get bottles one night in Miami, that fourteen hundred dollars doesn't cover that. So at some point you so might be depending on where you go. You might have a GoFundMe yeah, asking you might, you might, yeah, to help yeah. pay if the you, rest you of your a bill. Wrong, a couple wrong moves, you might. Yeah, it's a wrap. GoFundMe. Make yeah. sure that ticket is round trip, guys, ladies and gentlemen. Round trip is where it's at. Yeah, yeah. Because you have to get back home. Come home. Back home. Come home. Indeed. So, so yeah, March 22nd, direct deposits should be hitting your uh, account if you're under the tax bracket like your boy. And <laughs> March 29th, the check should be coming if you didn't get the right deposit set up because you're still living in 2000 and 2000. That's great. Yeah. I think everything's great about uh, the stimulus. The only thing that I don't like is that Congress is still hung up on this whole minimum wage thing. So federal minimum wage is $7.25. Okay. It is impossible to have a life, support yourself, support a family I on know, $7. I, I was still, well, federal, yeah. Okay. On $7.25 an hour. Now, there were been numerous proposals for the minimum wage to be raised to $15. However, Democrats, Republicans are both having an issue with giving Americans a living wage. You know, why should Americans have a living wage? Why should we be able to support our families or feed ourselves or, you know, just be good? So that's my only problem with with everything yeah. that's passed with this new stimulus bill. I hope that they can get their shit together and get us $15 an hour minimum wage. I think it's I think it's only right. Yeah, man, start pouring into the economy so that we could be good. Start pouring into the people so the people can start pouring back into the economy. Yeah. If you don't set the people up with for success, if you keep the people down suppressed with minimum wage at seven twenty five, then there's no way I'm going to put money back into the economy because I have none to put back. But if you gave me fifteen, I might buy that t shirt. <laughs> I mean, it helps. It helps. It it definitely helps a lot. Um, I bought a pack of uh, undershirts the other day mm -hmm. at um, TJ Maxx. I bought some house slippers as well. Okay. But I bought the other undershirts. I don't know about you, but I struggle with undershirts. Do you struggle with that? What type of struggle? Um, I can't find ones that the collars stay flat. After you get the, the ones after like, the wash that get like wrinkled at the top. Sometimes, sometimes. Oh, you gotta get you some Hanes, bro. Uh, but I feel like Hanes isn't sturdy. I feel like the collar isn't thick enough. Does that I make mean, sense? I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm not. I haven't had that problem with Hanes t-shirts, like with the like with the waffle neck t-shirt talk on the King Speech podcast. Nowhere else. <laughs> Nowhere else do you get this. In that t shirt talk. Well, you know, we give them what they want. Give the people what they want. Absolutely. No, but I say that to say is that, you know, I could buy that extra t shirt now because I got the with stimmy. The with the stimmy. <laughs> <laughs> I've made some advanced purchases. I was like, I'm going to buy I know exactly where shirts. my I know exactly where my stimmy is going. So Me too. Exactly. I think everybody knows. Most people know where my stimmy is going. Uh when I receive it in a few weeks. But it's it's great news. I don't really know. I I know where it's I know where it should go. You know where it should go? It's going where it should go. And I know. Well, mine. I know two places it should go. It can go either way, but like, I don't know. Whatever. Either way. Wait, two places that it should go for you? <clears throat> either way is an L. I mean. It's a, it's a, it's, it's, I think. It's a response. I think, I think, in, I think in both of our situations, um, you know, we're probably not like the end all be all when it comes to where our stimulus goes. Yeah, I know. Definitely ran that by boss today. Yeah, got you, right? Hey, Check. boss, Stimmy's coming on the 22nd. Do you think I, I'll be able to spend a couple how, of... How do you want to handle that? How yeah. do you, how, how where do you, do you want... To... Where do you want me to send my, the rest of mine to? Where do, where do you see us moving with the Stimmy? Yeah, yeah. What, what, are, our, what are our plans for this? What are our options? Yeah, well, I was like, what are our plans for the Stimmy? You know what's crazy? Whenever you ask them, like, what are our plans? We're just saying, hey, what do you want to do? <laughs> just think of creative ways to... 
get the answers that we want from things. I mean, you just got to make yourself feel like you're contributing, right? That is your mean, plan. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, yeah, that's... Kim, Kim, Kim's been doing that. She's been hitting me with like a lot of good ideas mm-hmm. that I've said before. But it's not, they're not your ideas anymore. No. You understand that, right? Yeah, no, that was never a good idea. Okay. She grabbed it out the cloud. It's yeah. hers now. What, yeah. And okay. As long as you know. Genius. As long, as long as you know. But she said it. She dropped it to me like it was knowledge. <laughs> and I was like, I looked at her like, nah, yeah, that ass. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's that's. I was life. like, nah, that ass. And I texted my man. I was like, yo, this is nuts. I literally said this was going to be a great idea. Yeah. It's cool. It's cool. Definitely cool. Love it. All right. What you got for us? Uh, first thing I got, I'm going to talk about that Quavo, Jack Harlow versus Lil Baby and 2 Chains basketball game. Ooh, the two and two we wanted. The two and on- <laughs> yeah. Was it the two and two we wanted? It's the two and two we got. It's the two and two we wanted. I don't know if it was the two and two we wanted. Um, Street, that, that, that rivalry was beefing, was brewing for some time. It was man. brewing for a while. Yeah, that Jack um, Harlow, Lil Baby, 2 Chains, Quavo, such a long history. So... <laughs> So long, what six months that long? Yeah. Uh, so, so Quavo's a hooper. If anybody's like you know privy to social media or YouTube, Quavo hoops. So does Two Chains. Two Chains played college ball, so they're both kind of solidified. Jack Harlow probably in the streets here and there. Little baby, I want to talk about Little Baby's basketball skills. Now, I have no problems with Little Baby. I think he is an amazing rap artist, and I don't want I, any problems. I, he's my favorite right now. I don't want any problems with Little Baby at all. But Lil Baby is is like that example of that rapper or hood dude that spent most of their life doing hood shit. So they're not really that athletic. Like there's a picture of Lil Baby actually like warming up before the game and Jack Harlow is stretching. Oh my goodness. And I just watched a video of Lil Baby shooting a free throw and hitting nothing but the backboard. Nothing but the backboard. This is what happens when kids grow up. Yo, what do you do? What do you, yo, yo, who said he was good to play? I, I I think he really because the thing is like in who the hood. Who invited him to play? No, who said yo? I had a little baby. Who said that? Who was that? He, guy? he probably beat somebody in a freestyle, and that's how we got the spot on the team. But the thing is like when when you when you're hooping like in the streets in the hood or wherever, like sometimes you got to put that hood nigga on your team. Like you have to, he because yeah. he's gonna he's gonna bulldoze he's gonna like bulldoze his way onto your team, and you know he's trash. But if you tell him he's trash to his face, he's gonna beat your ass. Little so baby. what do you do? You put him on your team, and you watch him shoot air ball after air ball, and you don't say anything. You say, "Oh man, they play some great defense, ain't they?" Nah, I used to get it off sometimes. How? Yo, come on, yo. yo. I used to get a couple of yos in, but I would, <laughs> I, would, I, would, I, would I would have to, have to reel it in. You feel me? I'll be tight in my soul. You would get a couple of yours. Yo, I'm off today. Yeah. Yo, I'm off. He'd be like, Yo, I'm off today. Oh yeah. man, I'm off today. Keep no, and then I'll be, I'll be. I'll be. Sometimes you be this guy. Keep shooting, OG. <laughs> <laughs> keep, keep shooting, OG. Yeah, they hacking me. They hacking yeah, me. This is fouling, boy. They fouling the shit out of me. Right. I'm, a, you know, I'm a big co-signer. Whenever some dude was like, he, he, not he can beat me in both. He can beat me in life. Uh huh. I co-sign. <laughs> you got to. What else are you gonna do? So yeah, man. Um, back to little baby. Yeah. What'd you think? Oh, um, two and two. Would you prefer if it was a different matchup, or like, is it like just throw that whole thing in the garbage? Um, I think there are some really like great like rapper entertainer hoopers out there. I think we right. know that Chris Brown, nice. Chris Brown is nice. Nice. Uh, they were showing like Dark highlights. Yo. Drake is kind of nice. Um, Quavo's nice. Two Chains is nice. I wouldn't give Drake nice. Drake's okay. Okay, I'll, I'll give him okay. I'll give him okay. Yeah. Uh, J. Cole. J. Cole's a beast. J. Cole's a beast. I'm just saying he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is. Could have been, would have been, should have been. Um, J. Cole. Well, but, I, but I don't honorary, ever want to see Lil Baby play basketball again. Not on television, yeah. not on videos. Unless yeah, he gets yeah. in the gym. Because he's that hood nigga. Like, he's, he, raps, he raps great. But he's a hood nigga that, like, bulldozes his way onto the court to play basketball, like, on the full court. And, and I don't. Want him on my team? You don't want him on your team because he's a liability. You don't want him on your team because you don't know what what well, liability, what he might do mm-hmm. on defense or on offense. What about little baby's game? Is it like not for you? On uh, listen, I just saw him shoot a free throw and hit the backboard and nothing else. 
can't contribute on offense. And on defense, he's just going to foul you every yeah, single time. Man. And if you complain about him trying to foul you, he'll fight you. So you want him on your team or off your team? You have to pick him something. He can't be on my team. Cannot. Cannot, will not. I'm not doing it. He can't be your fifth man. I've picked up that fifth man so many times in my life. I have also. And then you pick up that fit, you pick up that fifth man. It's a close game. It's point game. This nigga turns it over. You lose the game. No way. That's that's what Trevor. happens. Trevor. That's what happens. Trevor. I can count how many times in my life I've let a bum hold the ball. But the thing is, sometimes I'm it's point, not even no, sometimes no. it's not even your choice. Cause that because when it's point game, everybody thinks they're a hero. So that bum gets a rebound. Like I everybody's like, yo, I'm right here. Everybody's like, the guard is here. Everybody's here. Yo, I'm right here. He's like, nah. He was like, he's he'll look up, he'll look around. There's some chicks in the corner. Yeah, he'll little, dribble that shit up. That flicker. No, the two hand shit. Yeah, the two hand flicker. Yeah, the little, psh, just like that. Psh, that's what them. Forget that's what them hood niggas throw up. <laughs> that's it. And where does it go? And their legs kick nowhere. Hood niggas, why your legs kick? No, nah, it's psh, just yeah. like that. And I don't get it. And then they just run back on the other end of the court. You lose. You don't play another game all day. Because it's just that yeah, competitive out nexus. there. It's mad next. It's like 10 niggas that got next. So I, so I had the advantage always. I was never a last shot taker. That wasn't really like my bag. Uh -huh. But I would always get the check because I was like small guy. So I get the guard, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I would make sure that we ran play strong side to the right. Okay. And leave that nigga on that side. <laughs> Every time. The niggas as, wide as open. Many top, yeah, whatever. <laughs> what, I, I, whatever. The niggas wide open. No idea what he's doing. <laughs> and if he got the ball off of like a bad bounce uh -huh. or like a fuck, like double team kick out, and and he throws it up and it was good, mm -hmm. it was meant to be. I'm gonna be real, completely honest with you. Like on the last shot, I'm usually the nigga that I wasn't the last shot taker either, but. I would do the thing where like I would make sure I'm getting that rebound and putting that shit back in for, for point game. Okay. That was my shit. Okay. Cause I cause I was I was elbow niggas. Yeah, I was doing was all getting, that so shit. You were, getting, you were getting whatever. Yeah. yeah, I was getting whatever I needed to get. Okay. Absolutely. I, and honestly, there's some times where I've been that fifth nigga. That's the liability. Like if it's a certain type of weekend right, in Rochdale, right, 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 and right. there's a certain type of niggas that's out there. I've been that liability. So absolutely. Many times. Oh my god. And there's a certain type of niggas like this nigga's home from overseas. Yeah, this nigga just hoop, when the Hoobers are actually. Hooping. Yeah, this nigga's just like home I've from been, college. I was, I've been on island so many times. Like whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> and I'd be like, hey guys, I'm open. Hey, hey, big bro, <laughs> I'm open. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, let me say something. Let me say something. Let me say something. Every overseas hoop is my big bro. <laughs> What can I say? What can I say? I need to pass. And I've been that dude, and, and sometimes like they'll hit me, and I'll drain that shit. Yeah, I mean, I'm I, my thing was like I knew I had so like all right. So when I like my confession is when I would play those games with those like big bros. Yeah, I would certainly make sure that I did I compensated in other areas. Yeah, you got oh, yeah, absolutely, oh, man. Yo, I'm getting steals. What? I got like ten steals. I am. Ten I am. Uh, who was the dude? Uh, <laughs> the dude who got ten steals last week? Uh, the Pacers. Oh, uh, uh, TJ. TJ. TJ I'm, little, I'm TJ. <laughs> Diving. Um. Um. Char I'm taking charges. I'm dialed on, on, in on, on defense. On concrete. Dialed in on defense. Charge. Yeah, I'm getting I'm steals. I'm talking on. Oh, I'm talking on D. Gotta get the vocab. Nope. Out there. Screen right. Screen right. Screen right. Screen right. Screen right. Hold on, every fucking screen. <laughs> Screen right, screen right. Uh, you gonna have to scream before it's even yeah, there. It's oh coming God, right. It's coming, it's coming right, coming it's right, coming, coming right, right. Coming right. I got your help. I got your help. I got your help. <laughs> oh my God! I got niggas help all the time. Oh man. Oh like, like, shit! Well, I knew my role, and I, and I learned that early when, like, I was getting my ass bust, and then like I couldn't bring the ball up because they were like strong and good. They were playing. The no, that was that was always my weakness too. Because when it was the big the big bros at the court. Like normally, if it's just like if it's if it's like regular people, like regular hoopers at the court, I can bring the ball up. Oh, if it's regular, I can get if point it's regular, a to point B. I, I'm the best. I'm one of the best regular hoopers. I can get it, but this, but like these these big bros, my nigga, they want to press you ninety four yeah, fucking feet because they, they know food. They get the I get the ball. It's like my nigga, get off me. Yo, oh, whoa, whoa, here get from off pick me. Up. Here from I'm here pick to up. pick up shit. Here for pick up Fuck. My bros. Jeez, man. God damn. Yo, refs. Relax. Bro, let me just bring it up. 
God damn. All I want to do. <laughs> just let me get the half court. The, like, get the half court. Just let me get it. the half court. Just and swing. then I'll get rid of it. Then we good. Swing it. God damn. Then we good. Now you expose me before I can even get the half court. Shit. <laughs> yeah. That was hoops for me. But the little nigga, the worst nigga to be was the scream at, yo, let him shoot. Yo, let him shoot. I used to, I used to, I used to call that out a lot. I used to scream that shit also. I used to call that out a lot, and I would I that that was I was bad. I used to have a real problem. <laughs> I don't know where it came from. I don't know what it was about. I don't know who I thought. I was like Russell Westbrook for pickup, like literally <laughs> Russell Westbrook for pickup. But the thing like the thing about it is like Russell Westbrook's not good, right? Like he's he, he sometimes he can't shoot. Like Some, yeah, you know what I mean. Like so I'm like sometimes I would have those days where I'm like. Trash and trash. I would I would see a nigga that yeah, I know nice can't though. shoot. As soon as he crossed half court, yo, let him shoot. Yeah, let him. No, no, leave him. Yo, I got boy. Yeah. Yo, <laughs> yo, leak out, leak. But then when you on the court with the big bros, and I'm bringing the ball up, yo, let him shoot. What? Excuse whoa, me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Excuse me. Nah, that's that's when that's when I'm, that's when I got a little chippy, chippy. No, that's when no, that's when I got super chippy, and that's when I would knock that shit down. Yeah, yeah. Now we're knocking. It. Now we're knocking it down. Now I'm telling you, sh- yo. But then he has some real moves. <laughs> All right, right. So like, so let me tell you exactly how that goes. Right. He's gonna say, "Yo, let him shoot. We're gonna knock it down because yeah, I know fucking baby pride. So then I knock that shit down. But then he comes because he's really, really good at basketball. He comes back and he hits me with a little boop, 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 boop. And I'm like, fuck. And I'm like, this nigga crossed over twice. Yeah, this nigga crossed over twice. Two what? times. Yo, where is this? <laughs> Like he, she shoot off the screen. Yeah. He crossed over twice. Yeah. And now he's, oh, I don't call off the screen. And now he's laying it up with his left. And and then and then you're looking for help. And I'm like, yo, what's yo? It's my help. Yo, <laughs> where y'all niggas was at? Yo, that ass. <laughs> Look around, that ass. Where y'all niggas was at? Yeah. That's crazy. That'd be but yeah. Saucy. Little baby can't hoop, can't hoop with me. Yeah. Uh, Dude, next, that's how two chains was looking at little baby. Oh, he was pissed. They definitely, they definitely, they definitely had There'll a fight no in the locker features, room. No features. <laughs> no features. There's, there's no two chains featuring. No, big bro can't get a feature. Baby. Nah. <laughs> but it's for Atlanta. It's, 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 the, it's all, for the city. It's the mega Atlanta freestyle, and two chains is like two chains little is babies right. on it. Nah. <laughs> so the next thing I had, just the All Star game. The All Star game itself was great. Three point contest was amazing. That dunk contest. All them niggas could have stayed home. Well, well, they well, done well, that well, shit well give, us, like, give us a thorough. Let's, let's, let's go through a thorough. thorough. All right, so, so go, go, th- go, give me skills. What do you think about big men? What do you think about big men winning skills challenges? Uh, I, I don't think the skills challenge is really like a, a, a skills challenge. Like the pass thing, like the skills challenge used to have the bounce pass and then the chest pass. Like, and now it just has the chest pass into the, that little circle. Yeah. Down and back. Layup. Yeah. And, and then, then down and back. Three. Boom, boom, boom. Um, I mean, you know, big guys, the game is different than it was, you know, 20 years ago. So I get it. Um, DeMontis Sabonis is a really talented guy. Like, you can see his numbers. He's killing. Um, but I don't know. I, I think people probably, I think Julius Randle definitely dogged it. Like, he didn't take it seriously. Yeah, one time for New York. <laughs> he didn't take it that seriously. Um, skills challenge, I mean, it, it was entertaining for what it was. The dunk contest, OB Toppin. I liked his moves. I liked his dunks. I uh, did. Did it? No, yeah, solid. Solid moves. Cassius Stanley. Um, after a while, he the thing I didn't like is that he just gave up because he tried to like catch the oop, catch the self throat oop, get it under the legs like Aaron Gordon did and dunk it, but he missed it twice. And then he just like gave up, threw him an oop, dunked it regular like an in game yeah, dunk. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't like that. Um, Simons got crazy hops. I liked his performance, but that hype was just missing from the dunk contest. Yeah. Like the players went on the sidelines with the video cameras and the jumping up and down and the cheering everybody on. That was missing. And I think that's a huge part of it. Um, I definitely think that is the moment, right? That, that yeah, that that moment that we're we're capping the night off with this dunk contest and we're gonna put it all on the line for this dunk contest. It's not rushed. There's mm-hmm. nothing after this. We're gonna give it all. We're gonna enjoy this shit. There's gonna be three rounds. There's gonna be three dunks. Yeah. There's gonna be bigger names of of dudes we know. I, I get give the young guys some love and some shine, but like bring back the dunk contest when like yo like it used to be T Mac versus Vince Carter. Yeah. Right. You feel me? 
like big names versus big names. Like, and so like it's cool to see young guys who can jump out the gym, but it's even doper when we're seeing our superstars get freaky. So I don't know. For me, it's like we're missing a little bit of the hype. Mm-hmm. But we're also missing some of that stardom as well. And we've had it, right? Like, we've had young guys. I thought this year was just, this is a COVID year. This is a throwaway. So it's I'm, an anomaly. I'm hoping for next year, bigger names, bigger stars, and, 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 and bring back that hype. The thing is, even the years in the, in the most previous years where we haven't had the biggest stars, we had guys that were like showmen. Like, Zach Levine put on a show. Right, like right, Aaron right. Gordon put on a show. Um. These guys are are young. They don't have a ton of it. I mean, Anthony Simons is probably the guy that's gotten the most minutes in the league because um, he, he has right. he, he gets plays. minutes. He, right. he gets reserve minutes for the, for the Blazers. Three years in. And he is. And he Obi's a rookie. Cassius Stanley's a rookie. Four years. Simons maybe, but he contributes. Yeah. He contributes on that Blazer team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's um, a rook. But I, it just can't. It can't be a combination of niggas we don't know and niggas that aren't showmen. And then also like the judges weren't really a huge part of it either. It's just not. It's, it, it was rushed. It, it was COVID. It was a COVID event. So then I feel like if that's what, if that's what's going to be, then just don't have the dunk contest. Just have the All Star game. Just have the three point contest. Right. Those are things that you can put together that the three point contest generates its own buzz because you got Steph Curry. You got Jalen Brown. You got Jason Tatum. You got yeah. all stars in it. Yeah, namely I Steph like, Curry. Yeah, yeah, right. That's that's that's, that's the that's, guy. That's, and that's the difference. But like, I also we like the three. Like we like the three point contest. Yeah, I, I think everybody does. That shit's fire because it's something that you can go out and kind of recreate on your own, regardless of your level of athleticism. Anybody can go out there and like practice getting shots up. We can't do windmills. <laughs> <laughs> no. You're not throwing it, throwing it off the backboard, cash it between the legs right now. Cooked. So I mean, it's, it's it's more relatable. That's why everybody loves the three point contest. Right, three point contest was fun. Yeah, uh, Mike Conley put up a show. Steph Curry, that guy. Yeah, it's not fair to have Steph Curry shoot basketballs against other people. It's just not fair. He's the greatest shooter that was ever created in the history of existence. Yeah, it's just not fair at all. Yeah, what? Chef Curry. That's what Wasn't they call him. Moving the net sometimes. It's not fair. It's not right. Different. Yo, what's your thoughts on Lethal Shooter? Do you like him? Yes or no? What do you mean like him? I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean like him? Do you follow his content? Yeah. Are you familiar with him? Do you think this is that he does is cool? I think it's cool. I think yeah. he was shooting like on the on the basket with no backboard and yeah. like and just swishing it. I think yeah. it's cool. Yeah. Sometimes all that shit is cool. Sometimes that stuff is cool. I I don't know. I'm not a hater. Definitely not a hater. Um, I watch all his stuff. I like I like a lot of his yeah, stuff. I feel some hate coming. <laughs> I feel it. I feel it in the air. All right, I'm gonna just leave it. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. No, I'm not. I'm not even hating. I'm not even hating. I'm just. Um, I feel like some like I like a lot of things that he does, but I feel like some of the things like like you can't like everything somebody does. So actually, yeah, whatever, fine. If I'm labeled a hater, I'm a hater. I like a lot of his like stuff that he puts puts out, mm-hmm. but I also feel like sometimes like. He po- he posted like should should celebrities be part of the three point contest? And Fuck it's no. like we get that you're a good shooter, dude, but like just fucking relax. That's the thing. Like, and people are right? advocating. Like, am I, I walling? No, you're not. Right. People are I'm advocating for like these um these like you know um, I mean, in the, and in maybe the back, he could but- back in the day. It was and one that you had ball up, and now you have like these guys that are just like dunkers, like international players right. that are great dunkers and really athletic. And there's always this call and this. You know, this call for them to be in the dunk contest against pros. And I think the dunk contest is for people in the NBA. And I think that's fine. That's their shit. That's their weekend. Why the fuck are you getting like that? Shit got me mad because he posted a picture of himself and it was like a whole like graphic. And it's like, yo, like, we respect you for who you are and what you do. Do you? We do. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> I do. I think. It, I think he. I, I've seen him work with a lot of different clients, uh-huh. and I think that like his. Like he. I, I've seen him change people the way people shoot and improve in free throws. Dwight Howard uh-huh. on high side. I mean Hassan Whiteside, but he healed. Like these are like Jordan Clarkson. Like like Can I've seen the charger it. MacBook charger. So my, like my thing is like I get it, dude. But don't try to include yourself Thanks. in this in this like all the shit. Like we get you a pro. We get you overseas. We get you a good shooter. We get you a potential. It didn't work that way. You made your way back to life. I think that's an amazing, phenomenal story. Mm-hmm. But just stay your lane now. Yeah. You know I mean? that's not- it's not plugged in? Oh, shoot. So, yeah, that's, that's what I have. 
Uh, Copy that. Um, so yeah, that's my. Little, I, I think like all rant. that, like like fringe pro stuff that we see on Instagram and on social media is dope. I think it's cool. Um, I think it provides like a great avenue for NBA players to go out there and like keep their shit sharp in the off season. But certain shit is just for a certain, you know, for the NBA. And like those guys get their shit off on social media. They get their shit off overseas, uh, different events. And now with like Bleacher Report doing this whole like celebrity basketball thing, they might be able to get this shit off there also. And then there's the big three Yo, so yeah, about that might that, come back. Um, Overtime is driving a league. Nice. Yeah, so Overtime is having a league in which, um, and, and I can get some more information on it, but basically Overtime is having their own league, semi-pro league, mm-hmm. for players to get paid, salaries, this and that, sponsorships, all of that. So something very dope that Overtime is putting together, um, I guess, to compete with what LeVar Ball is trying to do and those type of, we've seen these type of things done before. So we'll see where it goes with this yeah. Overtime league. I respect the effort. It's all about the quality of player, the quality of the game. Um, at the end of it, because uh, you're never going to have names as big as, you know, Kawhi Leonard, Steph Curry, LeBron James. Like, you'll never have that. But if you can get something competitive, like, you know, the basketball tournament that's on um, every year on ESPN. Like, I watch that. And it's competitive. Right, right. TV, TV there's like nice. Yeah, there's like former players in it, former over, overseas guys. As long as it's competitive and the quality of the game is good, people will watch. Yeah. Um, they will not watch if Lil Baby's playing, though. And no. Absolutely not. No, I think this league is for like those high school guys who have a lot of clout, but behind their name, mm-hmm. um, and may not want to go college, or maybe those high school guys who went college, and I don't know. It's one of those. I gotta look into it a little bit more. Okay, it's one of those things. Cool. For our next topic, I have gotten the tea on the Royals. The tea and crumpets. <clears throat> Just the tea. Oh, not the crumpets. Damn it! No I love crumpets. crumpets. Never actually had a crumpet. Uh, neither have I. <laughs> I, I. I imagine it has to be like a scone. Why can't they say scones? It's probably like a smaller scone. Crumpet sounds very minuscule. In fact, let's Google crumpet like we don't have internet or Wi-Fi. Right. Oh, I need to get some singles. For crumpets? For breakfast in the morning. <laughs> singles for... <laughs> New yeah, it's like English muffin. It's like a round English muffin. Oh, wow. Like That's a less it? attractive... A like crumpets a, a fucking English muffin? Like a less attractive waffle or pancake. Nah, I ain't no syrup on that joint. It's butter. Nah, I'm good. Butter? It's just butter. Butter on the crumpet? Butter on the crumpet. <laughs> All right, let's get into these uh, these racist so royals. So I got the tea on the racist royals. The royals have sat down with, <clears throat> I guess, the one and only Oprah. The queen. Queen O. And they they, t- they told it all. They got mm-hmm. into the meat and potatoes. They let, it, they let it be known. They let it out. Meghan Markle told her side of her experience of being a royal. Yep. And what that was like and how she felt being accepted by that family and was she accepted at all? Mm. No, she was not. Then she spoke about having a child for the royals that had African descent. Yep. And it caused a stir in the royal palace of if that baby's pigment might be too dark. Mm. Can't have a darkie Can't in the palace. Can't have a darkie in the palace. So what they do, they said, yo, you know what? Y'all can't take royal pics and your kid can't be named the prince. Can't be a prince. Can't get security. Yeah, so good luck being a royal. And then this is my only thing, and I kind of like it's like a little sensitive topic, but we'll go just whatever. Yeah. Maybe you lead on that. Yeah, I'm going to go in. Okay, yeah, okay, cool, cool, cool. This is good then. So then Meghan Markle also spoke about how she felt suicidal, Mm -hmm. um, and Oprah asked her a challenging question about if she harmed herself, and... I just feel like I got to watch that part for myself. I got to see that. And that's where I'll leave that. Okay. What do you um, think about this all right. uh, take? So first off, like I'm, I read a part of the article that you said where um, Harry described his experience with his wife and the mother of his children, Meghan Markle. Um, it's an experience that he feels like his mother went through also. Yep. And there's rumors that they killed his mom because she had a mind of her own, you know, and she was in Africa kissing black babies and she was a philanthropist and she just wasn't about just like sitting still, right? She was, she was, a, she was a person that wanted to make a difference, an active difference, a present difference, right. as opposed to like all the talking and rhetoric that they say they do. Um, this is no surprise to me. Megan Markle is a black woman. Now, Colorism is a factor here also because 
they talk about the, the, the baby's pigment, right? So they're concerned that the baby's going to be like too dark or, or look obviously black or which, from of African descent. Which they've clearly never did the interracial thing before because if you yeah. did it, you would know that that's... Like, well, they've never done it publicly. Yeah. We'll just say that. Yeah, facts. Absolutely. Right. Um, that's, that's actually a very good, very good asterisk. Another thing is that they're coming at Meghan, Meghan Markle, but Prince Andrew, who was Prince Charles's brother, was hanging out with Jeffrey Epstein and fucking little girls. But that's not a big deal because he wasn't, you know, marrying a black woman or having children with a black woman. Yeah. So it's fine. You fuck those little girls over there. You good, Andrew. Andy, you good. Andy, you're cool. Yeah. Harry, Megan, we got to talk. They, those are the people that need to have the conversation. And give me your passport. And give me your passport. And your baby's not a prince. And you get no security. Yeah. Right? And your darky baby gets no security. And you can't, and you can't get uh, mental health attention. You can't do things. For no, you can't. Yeah, because she, she asked. She was like, they have, they have human resources. A family has human resources. Yeah, man. I don't know, man. Like, uh, you know, I I just don't think it's anybody should go through that. And I'll just put it that way. I don't think anybody should go through that either. But this, the English royal family, English royals, have set the standard for racism, sexism, classism in this on this planet. They have colonized every single country, with the it's exception true. of I think about ten or twelve countries in this world. They have colonized Africa, stripped them of their resources, all their diamonds and gold. There are no diamonds and gold in England. They're only there because they took them from Africa. The drip. You know, they, they mastered slavery and Americans got slavery from them. Right. If you want to really do the science. Countries have had to go to war for their independence. Countries that our families are from have had to go to war for independence from England. Like, the only reason we speak English is because of them. The only reason people speak Spanish are because of the Spaniards in the 17 and the 15 and the 1600s right. that enslaved so many people around this world on this Western hemisphere. So they are the blueprint. So this is no different. Like, they can't have their blood tainted by African DNA. It's so crazy how they just did that, man. Because now your royal family to them is tainted. There's a black woman. There's black babies. These babies are going to blow up, grow up as as black people. Like their son is going to grow up as a black man. Couldn't couldn't give us that much power. Like it's not even about like giving the power. It's about what how they see it. Yeah, they, they, right. It would be impossible for the, like that just to, us for us to have that. Oh, like. Like imagine, because like imagine us as a people, like y'all knowing that like we have royalty. For me, it's not even about because I'm, I mean you're right. Also, because any history that you read about Africans or slaves, they don't mention black royalty. Like no. as as far as history is concerned, the way it's told, there's no such thing as black or African or indigenous royalty. Right. That could have been the first. That could have that would have been crazy. That's why they had to stop that there. Yeah, there's no way. There's no there's they, nothing they that we they read tried. in history books with black kings, black queens, indigenous that was, that was, queens. They had meetings about that. Yeah. Jeez. The fact that they had meetings about that just shows you how sick of a world we live in. It's it but they they they, they made the blueprint. This yeah. family, this entity, this unit in this palace. Right. They made the blueprint. So this is no surprise, right? Um Meghan Markle talked about like she was like there were points where she was suicidal because imagine you being this black woman in this palace where nobody fucks with you. Nobody cares about you. Nobody cares about your kid. All right. The one that you're carrying, the one that you will carry, the one you have to tend to. And then you try to get some mental health. And what do they tell you? Now nah, we're good. Now nah, you're good. Sleep it off. Jog it off. Go work out. Could she even leave the crib? Could not even leave the crib. No passport. So, I mean... And then Harry, being this guy who knows they did his mother wrong, you know, so Harry totally understands where, you know, how his wife feels, given that his mother went through the entire situation. Um, you know, they had to get out of there. Yeah. And I, I mean, the internet's praising Harry for it. And I, I praise Harry for it as somebody who is now in a, what, like a real, like marriage and relationship is supposed to feel like, like, yeah, you got to support your wife. 100%. No matter what, that's 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 who you really like when it, and that's really like as men, that's a really great example, right? Um, 
when you leave your family and you get a wife, that is your family. So if your family is now telling you, yo, your other family is making me feel uncomfortable, guess where your loyalties lie? You got to fix it. You got to fix it. You have to at least, you know what I mean? Which it seems like, you know, try to see where you can, whatever. Yeah. But if not, then priority number one is your family. And we see the way in the, he, which he responded. Like to say, yo, I'm going to denounce my name as royal mm-hmm. for the sake of my wife is, is, is a great sign of love. And I want to commend him as a man. Because I think that's big. It's huge. Uh, not, I, you know what I mean? We can't, I can't really say how many other men I would know that would do that. Not saying that he's like one of in a million. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying not a lot of guys would, would put somebody else before them. So I respect it. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 um, it's an honorable move. It's a sacrifice uh, that he's making. But if you talk, if you listen to the interview, like he talks about how even before this, he kind of wasn't happy in this structure. Right, right. right like people right. thought he was happy because when the cameras were on and pictures were taken, he was smiling. You yeah. know, and he was like this happy go lucky type of young kid. Um, but I, you know, and, and it's brave of them to to basically like dish all this dirt on this on this royalty because who knows what can happen after this. And then you know they drag her name through the mud, drag a black woman's name through the mud. Like it's 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 disgusting. It's sick. But like I said before, they laid out the blueprint of classism, racism, slavery, colonization, all kinds of shit around the world. This is no surprise. If they had it their way, they'd, they'd still have all the power that they had back in the 17, 18, and 1900s, ruling all these countries of black people, stripping their countries of resources and freedom and rights. Yeah, so fuck him. Like I, I, I've, yeah. I've, I've never, like I've, I've never had like a reverence or a respect for anything royal, even as a kid, because I just thought it was bullshit. You know, like the world has moved towards being more of a democratic right, place. Right, right. I feel, I feel that, I, I feel that, and I respect that stance. Yeah, hundred percent. Just because of the way they gave it up and the way they like still give it up, you know, it's just a little not. It's just it's not forward, and I'm just from a forward place you have to you know and Same. you know like i said we give like you know shouts to to megan and to harry this is not easy i mean you can people will do all they can to say hey harry comes from a place of privilege megan comes from a place of privilege but you got to put a premium on your mental health and you got to put a premium on Same. the lifestyle and the way your family and your kids grow up like a lot of that stuff has nothing to do with the dollars that you have in your bank account yeah. Or the privilege that you have, or the influence that That's you a have. Real, yo, it's a real big. I think this is a real big. Just like I think this is probably like maybe the biggest um, and the greatest example we've seen from a royal family. If you think about it, it's a great lesson for us just to pause and think. Like the lessons of like money isn't everything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Status absolutely. isn't everything. Like maybe, maybe, just maybe, mental health is important. Maybe. Maybe like what we're building as a family is more important than the f- the money and the fame. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like there's so many different lessons that we can just commend on them just taking that stance. Because you have to think about like, forsaking being royal, whether it's corrupt or not, is something that maybe some of us may be like, yo, I wish I could be a prince. I'm, I'm sure. I, you know what I mean? Like so like for them to say like, like it's not everything. I could I could bang with that. I could I could see where they're coming from. I think what they're looking for and what's invaluable, right? Worth more than anything is peace of mind. Coming home every day, right. knowing that family's safe. Your family's safe. The people in your house have your back. People are the people that you call family. The ones you raised, the one you came up with, they have your back. They have Those your back. People. Yeah. yeah. It, it would be impossible for me to go home every day and, and think, hey, like you know, somebody's plotting against me or they don't really fuck with me here. That's, that's hard. Yeah. That's extremely difficult. So, you know, like I said, they are the, they have drawn the blueprint up and they are executing it the way that they always have. It is no surprise. Uh, before we get out of here, guys, we're going to touch on a few sports topics, sports, 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 uh, shout out to Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons <laughs> for getting a haircut from a nigga that has COVID and not being able to play in the All-Star game. I don't blame them for this, just just to be just to be clear. Cause nobody's gonna walk around All-Star with not with not having without having a tight line. Not anybody should. So if I'm about to COVID, guess what? I'm still gonna get my line fixed. It sucks to be that guy though. It does. That sucks. 
Yeah, it was it was it was tough for them. That's a sucky. That's a sucky one. Um, do you follow you follow football, NFL football, stuff like that? A little bit, yeah. Dak okay. Prescott got paid today. Yes. Man. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about Dak? Dak getting his money. <laughs> I don't follow. Maybe, 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 maybe this might be. I don't know. Okay. Not not the right take, but tell me correct me if I'm wrong. And they can't even do shit. E. Okay. I feel you. Know what you? What do you like, like in comparison is, to like in comparison to like yo Dak ain't like been where Patty Mahomes been, what, right? What is your Dak ain't been where 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 uh, Cam Newton's been? What? But what where has your, Dak been? But what is what is your like? What is your measure of success for Dak? Right? Because he's one of what? He's what is his some, what is his winning? Uh, he's wh- won a few playoff games. Okay. He's, you know, taking How many the games over 500? Is, how many games over 500 is Dak? I think he has a really good um overall record. Let's look it up. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, here. We got the internet. I'm I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy that Dak got his money. I believe he I believe he deserves it. I do believe if he was Tony Romo or Aaron Rodgers or anybody else, he would have gotten his money sooner. Um his numbers have been amazing last year when he was injured the Cowboys we're trash and a half. He has an overall Q, uh, winning overall record of 42 and 27. All right. He has 106 career touchdowns, only 40 interceptions. Um, the last full season he played when he was healthy, the Cowboys went 8 and 8. He threw for 4,900 yards, enough. 30 touchdowns, and 11 interceptions. It's not good enough. The year before that, he was 10 and 6. His rookie year, he was 13 and 3. That was really good. We like that. But yeah. you haven't given me that since. And so for me to just, whatever, great. Dak got paid, great. And here's what I would say about this, actually, so that I don't come off as a hater. Do something with it. Tired of guys getting paid, ain't doing shit with it. The reason why you got paid is to do shit. So when you get paid, do some shit. Dak is a great quarterback. I don't really see it. He doesn't, listen, like, he has Jerry Jones making football decisions, which hampers the the advancement and the growth of his team and him as a quarterback. I'm just saying, it's it's. It, I think it's well deserved, and I'm always I think, like whatever. I just I want I want I want. I, but like we, this is America's team. What are you looking? But the thing is, like we we put that pressure on the Cowboys and on Dak Sorry. because of all the publicity that the Sorry. Cowboys get. You got to like boil it down to the bare bones of like football, and he's a great and he's a great quarterback. Cool. Oh, okay. Yeah, got paid. I'm happy. I'm. I'm not mad. He got paid, but I do want. I see. My thing is like, I want. I want you to get paid, right? I want you to get that crazy bag, seventy five million guaranteed. Uh-huh. I want you to show me seventy five million guaranteed. No one should be able to walk toe to toe with you. Eight and eight. I don't care who. You know what I mean? You're not wrong. That's that, that's my only thing. Like, I, I want black quarterbacks to get paid. Love it. I want black quarterbacks to succeed. I want them to dominate, though. I don't want eight and eight. I, I think given the right team around him, Dak is... I want him to have the right team. I want him to have a good wide receivers, yeah, a good Dak O-line. Dak is a good guy. I want him to have a good defense. I want him to be set up for success. I don't want him to just to get paid and just be a dud. What's wrong with getting paid and being a dud? What's wrong with that? Because you get, you get paid multiple times in your career as a pro athlete. So sometimes that gets old. And winning actually is actually what you're really playing the game and the sport for. But do you understand no athlete has ever gotten paid for what they're going to do? They always get paid for what they've done. Dak got that money because of what he's done. Yeah. Dak got that money for leading the league in passing yards the last season he was healthy. That's why he got that money. So I understand your expectations it's are high, not, but it's not to me. I don't think that's why. I don't, I don't think that's why you get contract extensions. For, what do you mean? Right, I think it's the other way around for me. Right, I'm extending you because I believe in you and your potential to make my franchise better, based on the efforts that you like. It's a combo mm-hmm. based on your previous efforts. I'm going to extend on you and pay you premium because I want, like, you deserve premium, but I also believe that you, with your skills and your premium skills, you can take me to the top. So all I'm, all my only stance is that with this premium, just give Dallas something. Give the Cowboy fans something with that 75 mil. They don't get a dime out of that, right? Give it a good ride. Eh, we'll see. <laughs> you only get paid for what you've done. Nobody's, get, nobody's gotten paid for what they're going to do. When you get a job, you get hired for what you've done, not what you're going to do. 
they think you can do what the job is because of what you've done. That's it. It's I, I, in simple term, yeah. <laughs> but I, absolutely, I, yeah, yeah. I just Dak do something with it. What do you think about Blake Griffin going to the Nets? Oh my god! What do you think about it? What do you think Blake I brings think Blake, to the Brooklyn I think Nets? Blake is washed. I think Blake and Jeff Green, same thing. What? Jeff Green is is balling. Right. So Blake not even that good in really. I might I might swing it to Jeff Green five times out of five before I swing it to Blake. Oh yeah, without a doubt. And and so Jeff Green has Blake shown this season. I think a, a lineup of Kyrie, James Harden, KD, Jeff Green, Blake Griffin is a problem for defenders. It is. I think it is. It is. And I also Production. think Blake Griffin has a different motivation than he has playing in Detroit, <laughs> yeah. playing in Brooklyn. Yeah. I, I, you know what? I want Blake is 32 years old. Not old at all. I want to see what he has left. I don't think it's much. That's trash. But I do think it's more than people think. Because like I said, I just feel like getting out of Detroit, getting out of that what losing he situation... He's not motivated. What if Blake starts going crazy again? He's going to start dunking on niggas again. What if Blake, after he gets that juniors? DeAndre, DeAndre dunking every day. Listen, when when Joe you got Green some dunking, everybody Kyrie dunking, everybody dunking. When you got some good coaching, when you when you're playing with Hall of Famers, when you're playing for something, it just does something to you. No, like I know he's going to switch the game. I know he's your adrenaline smell, he's rises. Smell this. Yeah, it's going to the opportunity in the East. They're going to kill Giannis. They're going to win the. Cha- I told you, they're going to win the championship. We're hard for who to win it. Lakers. The Lakers aren't winning the championship this year. They might get to the finals. Yeah, that's fine. But the I know. Yeah, the Nets are winning the championship right, this year. Right, right, right. Yeah, I told you that as soon as the trade happened. Just want to put that on wax. It's there. Okay, copy that. You got to speak up so they can hear you. What'd you say? It's there. Copy that. Awesome. Great, great, great. I might put a bet in tonight. <laughs> 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 Some niggas got it in the bag, Blake. Yeah, I think Blake will be motivated, and I think we'll see. Let's see what the, let's some see what the more uh, yeah. some more spice out of Blake Griffin than we have in the past, you know, two or three years. Because the last season he was fully healthy, he with Detroit, he still averaged twenty four a game. He had two last season. He's averaging twelve. Well, he was injured. He was injured most of the season. Uh, those knees that he has are just fucked up. But you know, like I said, people find different motivations to perform. No, it's when gonna be different. Yeah, when there's you know you something to play for. You dangle a dollar for. in front of somebody, they go they go and jump. Yeah, I jump. Huh? I, you dangle a dollar in front of me. You gonna jump? I will jump. One one dollar. You worth you worth more than a dollar, King. Come on. Worth more than a dollar, King. Pacific Division, Central Division. Why go on? They give me play, ultimate playoffs. New features. Oh, twenty one championship. Brooklyn Nets plus three hundred. Yeah, you shouldn't bet on a team that's the favorite, though. You should bet on like a team that's not. I know, but if I bet right now, ten dollars for thirty dollars, take that. Okay. <laughs> okay. If I were you, I'd find it. Like, what team has like Celtics? Like shitty odds to win a championship. Celtics. Just put like five dollars on the Celtics to win the championship. No, fuck them. They're trash. Five dollars. If they win the championship, Denver. how much do you win if you put five dollars on them? But now you. But now here's this is a nice one. If you said y'all, I take Utah. To win yeah. the championship. Uh-huh. All right. Oh, it's a plus 150. $10? $100, $100 for 180. It's not a bad bet. It's not a for bad Utah, bet. not a bad bet. They got the best record in the league. But, but they're not good. They got Rudy Gobert. $200 million man. Yeah. <laughs> Rudy Gobert. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a bet, I'm a, I might see what's up with that, uh, with that Brooklyn, though. COVID Gobert. He's like the outbreak baby. Don't do that. Or the outbreak monkey. Baby. He's the outbreak monkey <laughs> that spread he COVID. He something the other day. Around all, the, around all the, of the NBA. That shit is sick. Him. Super sick. My son. Indeed. All right. Um, I got, that's all I got in the tank. You got anything? Anything else for the people? Um, no, I had a couple of random questions I was going to ask you, but. What's that? I can't remember now. Oh, okay. Trash. Copy that. I did want to talk about um, uh, NBA Top Shop, people selling highlights. You heard about that? Read about that? No. So NBA Top Shop is, are basically like digital highlights that you can buy and you can own. So LeBron James recently had a highlight that sold for like a million dollars to somebody. Um, what? I Yeah. 
I just don't know the difference between this and me going on YouTube and pirating the video and just saving it on Sounds my hard like a drive. Sick ass OnlyFans for creeps. It is, it is it is essentially why are you, like why are you paying to see LeBron? I do I see I see LeBron every day on Bleacher Report. But it's like to own the highlight. There's some kind of equity in in owning the highlight. It's like an advanced like baseball or basketball card, like trading card. Cuz I like LeBron James rookie card sold for like 2 million dollars the other day. But owning a highlight, what is that? Yeah, I don't know. It's different. Just thought I'd bring it up see if you um if you bought any highlights, there only there's only one thing I've ever pur- purchased. What's that? That was a a digital copy of anything. Porn? No. Oh, what was it? That was when Kobe dropped 81 on Jalen Rose. You did? Oh, you bought on yeah. NBA.com? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, I remember that. I remember those days. We could buy like yeah. games. Yeah, I bought. That. Yeah. I was like, Dad, I need to please because I couldn't see it last night. Yeah, I was I was asleep. <laughs> I saw I saw the highlights yeah. the next day. Yeah, it was, it was a late game. Yeah, TNT. T- t- I mean, at the time it I was, was just, it was t- it was a ten thirty game. Nobody stays up for the ten thirty game. It was, I, I it was, was the Lakers versus the Raptors. I used to let's stay be, up. Let's be real. I used to stay I used, up. For the I, I used to too. I, I just don't think the rest of the world was at thirty five. No, I can't. I try. I, I'll be up. And I'll be vamping sometimes. But I'm you, asleep at. But you're also five years older than me, so it's probably a little different. Maybe I'm asleep at halftime. I'm going to sleep at halftime. He sleeps. Absolutely. Can't do it. Can't do it. And the night that he scored 82, I went to sleep early. I was I was young then. Of course, I wasn't 35 that long ago. But I had work in the morning, so oh, I went to sleep. That long ago. That long ago. But uh, I had work in the morning, so I went to sleep. Then I watched it on my computer at the job I facts, had. Facts, 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 facts. The next facts. morning. Definitely, and pixelated. Definitely, definitely, watch, yeah, definitely watched it on the computer. Pixelated, pixelated video because yeah. it was shitty back then. She had to do what she had to do. I mean, we thought it was amazing because it was all we had. Anyway, that's all I got, guys. Thank you guys for listening. Hit the King Speech Podcast, YouTube, and Rowdy's Instagram. Home. Rowdy's home. Rowdy's home. They're, they were in Atlanta. Thankfully, they're still home. Did they perform at All-Star Weekend? No, but Bobby was at the Quavo basketball game, though. With a duffel bag of money. He made an appearance there. Yep. Yep. Bobby, another guy I never want to see play basketball. Oh, God, no. There's no way Bobby or Rowdy hoop. There's no way. No way at all. Dirk. No dirt. But if they ask to play on my team, you can. Because <laughs> I don't want no problems. Yeah, big bro. <laughs> hey, we got room. We got room. We got room for one more. I only more. got three. I need two. We only got room for you one more. Bobby? Yeah, 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 yeah. I got room for two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, you got bitch. Yo, bro, you call next time. <laughs> That's how that goes. All right, y'all. Peace out. See you guys later. <laughs>